now almost 10 minutes after 7. Alex has set us up. So I think we're online. It looks like we are because there's yeah. Troy. Okay. And we have a uh, we have a quorum because I believe we have three, four, we four out of here. seven. That's more we than we More than fifty percent. Exactly. Thank so you for uh, I will call the order. Call the order to meeting. I will <laughs> call the meeting to order. Um, welcome everyone. Welcome. Um, technical support for meeting. That's me. Okay. Opening reflections. Well, I don't know. Do you want I'm, to move right to? We will. Yeah, I, I just want, you know, I usually like to try and open on some kind of a thought. And uh, just my heart goes out to the people that were, that went to a celebratory parade and oh. did not end with a, oh, wow. yeah, that terrible. was just a dark, that was very out in Kansas City. So, yeah. and, it's, and it's all around us. The person that was killed was a mother of two children. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know that's yeah. that's sad. That's really it. Really gets to my heart because the mom's not ever coming home. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. know. So, just like you said, let's just give a prayer or, or however. Yeah, you know, and and just hopefully everyone else can be protected. On that positive note, I would suggest that we move to. Uh, Old business 4A and welcome Troy. So he doesn't have to stay any later than possible. He might have to go out and shovel all that snow that's coming tonight. You mean that was supposed to come Tuesday? Yeah, yeah. I think we're getting an inch or a dusty oh, Lord. tonight. But I'm not going to even wait for that. Welcome, Mr. Bryn. How are you? Uh, good. How are you? Thank you uh, to the committee uh, for allowing me to. Uh, join you this evening. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I apologize. I couldn't be with you in person. My wife travels a lot for work. So I have farm duties uh, here at the house by myself. So uh, that's always fun. Um, anyway, so uh, uh, thank you. I did receive the questions that the committee had drafted. If um, you could do me a kind favor because I haven't had the opportunity to meet everybody in person. If you could just introduce yourselves, I'd appreciate that. Sure, oh, sure. Do you want to start? With... All right. Um, I'm Sarah Strong, and I live down on Middle Street on the dead end part, and I've been on this committee since the since the beginning, I guess. Yeah. Which was it was twenty that summer that we had, it was, had town that meeting first outside. COVID summer, 20, right? It was yeah. outside at the school. Yeah. So it was, yeah, so yeah. We, we formed after, so it must have been July or something. Right. July or August of, up so yeah. Yeah. almost yeah. four years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm Joanne Godding. I've lived in Hadley for like 32 years, I guess. And I've been on this committee since the beginning, too. I live on High Meadow Road, over to where sometimes we can see fireworks above UMass out in our house sometimes. Mm. <laughs> kind of, so UMass is not that far away. Kind of due north from uh, Home Depot. Yeah. Right now, we, we, we see the lights from all along Route 9 because all the leaves are off the trees in our backyard. Mm. So the malls are just a mile away. Mm. Easy shopping. <laughs> And my name is Crystal Jackson. I am happy to have been on this board going on a year now. So we just have to see what happens going forward. <laughs> I'm uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Mark Dunn. I uh, have been, the, I was the secretary or clerk for the first three years and um, I now somehow ended up the short straw. I am the chair. <laughs> um, so, and I have lived or rented in Hadley for a while. I just got married in July and then moved in with my wife. So I'm now not a renter anymore. <laughs> so, um, and then when I, I say a while. Um, I first moved to Hadley in 1997, I think. Yes. Yeah. Well, congratulations on, on your marriage. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And we have three other members. They're, they're not here right now. Yeah. Pat, who is our um, clerk, clerk extraordinaire. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 
She is the beating heart and engine of this, uh, <laughs> everything that we do. She is uh, on vacation. Uh, Wayne is, uh, we don't, I haven't checked my email, but he may have had a conflict. And uh, that's... Megan was, Megan. was going to Megan try to was make it on Zoom. Yeah. So maybe that could happen. So anyway. We'll, so I did want to share with you, Nick, that I did send an email to you with the uh, slides from the um, from the uh, MMA conference that I attended to the DEI workshop that I went to. Yes, this this was wonderful reading. I I'm yeah, glad you, you, that you, you that. shared a ton of resources. Yeah, oh. that's a yeah, so, I'll just give you guys a little bit of background about myself. Uh, so I, I'm uh, fairly new to Hadley as the HR director. Um, I came in at the end of May, early June uh, this past year. Um, I come with uh, a master's degree from UConn in uh, HR management. I also have my uh, uh, SHRM CP certification, certified professional. Um, that's just me here but my my background is really from I'm originally from Tampa Florida I moved up here from uh for my wife obviously she's originally she's from Springfield she was born and raised here um so she loves this area um and then I joined the military uh at a young age so I've been uh all over the world been exposed to many cultures many different you name it, I've been there pretty much. Uh, I was in the military for 20 years, uh, did a little over, right about seven years deployed. I did six years, 11 months deployed um, in my time in the service. And then after getting out of the service, I worked in veteran services for a period of time before I transitioned into HR. Um, in my time uh, working in veteran services, I had the fortune and opportunity to serve uh, with Wounded Warrior Project as one of their regional managers. I managed our Kansas City and Pittsburgh office. So um, I've worked with a diverse uh, group of people pretty much my entire life. So um, when the notion of DEI kind of first came out, I was a little confused because from, as you can understand, from where I come from, it, w it was never a thing. And I uh, so I was I was a little perplexed about it until I actually started studying it. Um, when I started uh, studying it, I realized my eyes opened real quickly about how important this work is um, and really having the opportunity to connect with uh, DEI practitioners from around the state. Um, and then I think my professor that I had at UConn was probably one of the best DEI people that I've ever met in my life and still use her as a resource to this day um, on different topics um, related to the, to the subject matter. Um, that being said, um, one of the things I will say is I'm not a DEI practitioner and I know that. Um, I, it's, it's kind of one of those things where you, like it's important in my work. So I, I, uh, one thing you'll learn about me quick is if it's important in my work, I dive deep into it. Um, and this is one topic that I've really taken on and uh, dive deep, really took it, taken a deep dive into. Um, mm -hmm. I really respect a lot of uh, the DEI uh, practitioners from around Massachusetts that are in the municipal setting. Um, as you guys are aware, um, DEI in municip municipalities is new. Um, it, it's very new. Um, if you look at that slide deck, it's still, you know, trying to make its way. Um, and in the interest, you know, you're starting to see big cities who have uh, chief diversity officers um, and some of the uh, now larger towns, so to speak, um, are starting to actually implement this position. It's something that's desperately needed, I feel, um, because HR and, and DEI are two different lanes, um, and we can talk a little bit more about that. So one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about, because um, I know you guys have been around for a while, 
is kind of, and I'm still new to Hadley, so kind of understanding uh, the common language around DEI, like as far as what the definitions for Hadley is, um, if you guys have worked that out, because I think in that understanding is having shared language um, across and common language is something that's important for us um, to move forward as we progress. I come at it from a, you know, a different lens maybe. So we all look at it through our own lens, so to speak. Um, and I think uh, some of the things, if we have common language and common definitions, I think that's gonna help us to progress forward. So we can kind of table that. And Nick, if you, you know, have those things that you guys decided on, I would appreciate that. Um, now the questions you guys asked me are pretty extensive. Oh, I'm just yeah. gonna say it's Mark, it's not Nick. Oh, Mark, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. It's okay. Sorry. It's all right. It's okay. <laughs> I, I've had people that call me whatever forever, and I thought I'm, I'm doing them an injustice if I don't just tell them. Yeah, so, <laughs> we know who we meant. Um, and I would just add to what you say. I can't speak for everyone else, but I'm not a practitioner. I'm someone who embraces the concept, but I'm learning, and you've probably yeah. done a deeper dive than I have. I just try to, anything that I see that seems to promote um, in inclusivity and uh, uh, trying to diffuse biases and things like that, I, I mm -hmm. am attracted to it and I embrace, but uh, mm -hmm. I, I yeah. wouldn't say I'm, Megan I'm not qualified or educated for it or anything. I, yeah. I put my foot in my mouth unintentionally yep. all the time. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> I want to acknowledge that I see Megan joining. Oh, oh good. good. Megan's on there. Yay. Hi. Hi. Hey. Sorry I'm Hi, late. Megan. Oh, there you are. <laughs> all right. So back back to you, Troy. I didn't mean to okay. take <laughs> Sorry, Megan. They, like, uh, I'm just going to jump in. So the questions you guys gave me um, are pretty extensive in nature. Uh, I obviously, because of the ex extensive nature, I basically wrote seven and a half pages responding to it. <laughs> um, and I'm not even joking. I have them right here in front of me. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you want to hit the bullet points, that's fine. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll try to hit the, hit the, uh, the highlights. Um, if you want me to dive a little bit deeper into one of the topics or, or situations, I'm happy to. Um, so... Um, the first question you you posed to me was, what do you think is the inherent value of diversity in the workplace in the town of Hadley? Uh, hmm. So I put those, uh, I'll just hit the highlights. I won't put my deep explanations into them. So innovation and creativity, improved decision-making, uh, broader perspective, increased employee engagement, enhanced problem solving, better talent attraction and retention, increased adaptability, a broader appeal, compliance and reputation, and social responsibility. I think overall the inherent values of the diversity in the workplace extends beyond more than compliance and regulations and contribute mm -hmm. significantly to the town's success, growth, growth and sustainability. I would just add wow. to that, um, and I'm sure it sounds like you're heading in that direction, that uh, we want to create the healthiest work atmosphere, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll highlight a little bit more in this next question that you guys posed, because I think it's a good segue into this. Is, uh, and we, we, we can chat a little bit more about these, but... Uh, so the, the question was, is what do you see our challenges and opportunities of advancing on an agenda of diversity, equity, inclusion in Hadley? Um, and I believe in a, before I even answer this question, I believe in a brave space. So uh, I like the word safe space when I'm having a one-on-one -on -one conversation, but I believe in, in this topic, we have to have a brave space. So that's able to address kind of some of the challenges that we're facing and that's where I'm operating from uh, when I talk about these things. Um, so I think some of the challenges that we're facing uh, is DEI definition and alignment of common language as I was discussing for the community and town administration and staff. I think it needs to be common language um, all across the board. So we all understand what the definitions are 
um, and we can operate accordingly. So uh, the next challenge I see is DEI, education for the community, town administration <clears throat> staff, which I feel is the foundation as I'm, is just like with any other thing, having that knowledge base to be able to build upon is, is definitely something. Um, establishment of top-down leadership, ensuring DEI values come from all elected and appointed officials to include all boards, committees, commissions, and that they are reflected in the words and actions of all municipal leaders uh, from staff on up, or I'm sorry, from officials on down, sorry. Uh, lack of DEI practitioner and funding to support the position. Uh, organizational culture and the feeling of psychological safety or trust for employees, which limits dialogue and exploration of the topic. Uh, resistance to change. Some officials and staff within the town may resist efforts to prioritize DEI and viewing it as unnecessary or politically motivated. Limited resources. Our town often faces budget constraints and competing priorities make it challenging to allocate resources to DEI initiatives. Bureaucratic hurdles, complex bureaucratic Bureaucratic structures and processes can hinder the implementation of DEI policies and practices leading to slow progress. Uh, lack of data, limited data on demographic trends and disparities may make it difficult to identify address inequities effectively. Implicit bias, unconscious bias among decision makers and staff members may influence policies, practices, and interactions perpetrating inequities. Community resistance. Some members of the community may resist efforts to promote DEI, fearing change or perceiving it as preferential treatment for certain groups. Uh, uh, I, I can elaborate on this one, but legal and regulatory constraints, legal frameworks and regulations may limit the ability of the town to implement certain DEI initiative or policies. These are things that are all common, like you know, I'll use the example of uh, gender identity on um, insurance forms uh, and so on and so forth. So th those are some th like constraints and limitations that kind of help us there or hinder us there. Mm -hmm. uh, and the last one I have is capacity building. Building the capacity of the town to effectively address DEI requires investment in training, education, and skill development. Some of the opportunities I see, I'll just hit the highlights on this, is uh, leadership commitment and accountability, diverse representation, equitable policies and practices, training and education, equitable service delivery, supplier diversity, accessible communication, and collaboration with other stakeholders. And I... I really like the opportunity of that last one. I've had some great conversations with Michael from Pittsfield on how he's uh, working with different community groups um, from the schools to nonprofits in, in the Pittsfield area on how he's expanding his, his reach of DEI and actually moving from town hall into the community. And I, I, I really like his efforts. I wish I had the same bandwidth he did it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, so the next question you guys posed is, uh, how does DEI fit into my professional HR role? Um, so I think most of these are pretty obvious, um, recruitment and hiring policy development, employee relations, community engagement and leadership support. Um, And I'll just say in summary there, D is not just a standalone initiative, but an integral part of my HR role by embedding DEI principles into all aspects of HR practices and policies. I plan to contribute to creating a workplace culture where all employees feel valued, respected, empowered to succeed. That's my goal. Um, as I said, I'm still new here, so I'm working towards that. Um, so I, the next thing is, is how can you guys um, kind of help me in my role as, as the uh, HR director here in town? Um, I think uh, the first thing I'll say is, uh, as I, I think you see the theme here is like some strategic guidance here. 
how you guys can offer strategic guidance and advice on developing and implementing DEI initiatives that align with town goals and values. Your expertise can help inform our approach and ensure that our efforts and comprehensive are comprehensive, effective, and sustainable. Um, best practices. Um, if you have any best practices or lesson learned from other towns or industries, helping us identify innovative strategies and approaches to address DEI challenging challenges. Um, data, access to any data that you um, may have come across, any research or benchmarking information. Um, I know there's another question about training and education, but I think multiple minds uh, come together. Um, also sharing resources like I've shared with uh, each one of you. Um, assessment and valuation, um, being able to help us um, conduct an assessment of what our current practices and policies are. Um, community engagement. Um, and I, I like this one because there's some, um, obviously there's some great, great stuff out there, great community organizations that, you know, I may not be aware of because I'm sucked into town hall, but you guys as longtime Hadley residents definitely will know of those community groups that can help us in collaboration um, to understand the community needs and perspectives and strengthen our relationship with key partners within our community. Uh, and advocacy and rep representation help Help me to advocate for policies and initiatives and resources that support DEI within our town administration and the broader community. Um, your advocacy efforts can influence decision makers at all levels, um, which I think is important. Um, as you've heard me talk about the top down, and I always, um, you know, feel that approach is that if leaders are are model, you know, using the language and modeling the behaviors, um, that that echoes down. Uh, tremendously. Um, so I will, I'll go through these. They're, they're quite extensive. Um, and I, I can send you my document, but I would just tell you some of the, the things that um, I've been working on since I've been here. So I'm not sure if you if, if the committee's aware uh, is uh, we're we're in the middle of a classification and compensation study. Uh, we just received the initial draft back from the Collins Center, um, and part of that study was the uh, was the job descriptions. So I had a great conversation with uh, the lady who drafted job descriptions for us, and she did great work. Couldn't imagine having to draft that many job descriptions from scratch, but she did. And at the end of it after I reviewed her initial draft, I asked her to make the job descriptions more accommodating and inclusive. And her response to me was a little shocking. Uh, I'll just leave it at that because I'm not gonna throw anybody under the bus. So I've <laughs> been personally going through every single one. Um, I'm about 75% through. Um, making sure that they're inclusive, accommodating, and not offensive like at all. Uh, and that's every from every aspect, um, you know, from ADA uh, uh, accommodating to, you know, gender. I, I've been scrubbing them, and I that's where Michael has been a great asset for me in Pittsfield because I asked him to help me uh, – and graciously, he provided his list that he looks for in job descriptions. So oh. I've just been diligently working through that list and um, mm -hmm. revising our job descriptions. Mm -hmm. um, Great. So I want to thank you, Joy, for, for your efforts. I really do. I appreciate everything that you are doing. Thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate um, you guys, I was really excited when I heard that there was an actual committee. <laughs> to be I, I didn't even know you guys existed. So it was great to hear that I have someone to lean on in these yeah. situations. Um, because I'm not perfect. As you know, we all said, I mess up, we all mess up. And there's going to be times where I may, to, may need to lean on uh, the committee for 
advice, guidance, uh, mentorship from time to time. Um, I'm a student of the game, but like I said, I'm not a practitioner at all. And, um, but mm -hmm. I want to get it right. I want to get it right for our, our, yeah. our administration, for our staff, for our community. And um, so I appreciate it. Are well, there any stay. questions? <laughs> yeah, just just like, stay for a long time. Stay. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything that uh, I can forward you guys my paper that kind of yeah. goes into the Oh yeah, yeah that'd be wonderful. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I decided I don't have to take a lot of notes because you've got them all. <laughs> I I <laughs> knew you guys would want this, so I I intentionally typed it out and uh, oh, wonderful. I, I will Sweet. send it to Mark. Um, you know, it was kind of something I was working on today as I was in and out of meetings and and so on and so forth. I just had it open, and then I would get another thought, and I would go in and type up something a little bit different or more. <laughs> Thank you. Mm, Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. I, I feel uh, heartened, you know, because we didn't know you from Adam. You, you, <laughs> we didn't even know your name until we found that out. So, <laughs> so you, know, you went from a blank slate to a, an impressive. Uh, yes. Yeah. An ally. Nice, wonderful yeah. person. Yeah. yeah. That's a real you. ally. It was not what we were expecting. <laughs> I, I really embrace this because I, I think, um, not to get too far off topic, but, um, you know, I think when DEI, when people think of it, it, it's, it's a scary topic, right? And it's something that people really relate to, um, either racial, ethnic, or or marginally uh, marginalized populations when that's not true at all. It, it's applicable to all of us. And yeah. if we could just get people to understand that um, and embrace it, then I think we would have a broader understanding of the topic and people would really have more buy-in, but it's mm -hmm. that education piece that's so important. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be so scary if people understood it's not just about race or culture, as you stated, it is inclusive of everyone, elderly, gender, it, it really yeah, is, and, yeah. and yeah. someone needs to, a group needs to actually put that out there, mm -hmm. and maybe other groups will follow suit, other states, and, and next mm -hmm. thing you know, we'll have a DEI that is, is, is approachable. Right. And you're not afraid to speak your mind or say how you may feel with that behind closed doors. You know, Absolutely. you'll be able to actually speak up. Okay. I, I, oh, oh, I was going to say that they appreciate the point that you made about what is the definition? Do we have a common language? And I think that's a good place to really take a look at. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, number one, oh, I didn't know there was a DEI committee. So number two, what is it? <laughs> yeah. You know, not just, I'm not saying you had that impression, but you know, yeah. that, that phrase didn't exist five years ago. Right. And now, yeah. you know, people have their own interpretation depending on their encounter with that. Right. That group. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And I really yeah. like the B. I am like, I hang on to the B the belonging part of that. I know it's not necessarily in the DEI acronym, but it's something that we strive to is for everybody to feel feel like they belong. Um, right. And with mm. all the work that gets us there, um, it, because that's when we know we have true buy-in, when people um, really feel like they belong. Um, and it, it's a lot of hard work to get there. Um, but I think, you know, with the efforts, we can we can certainly get there. Oh yes, definitely. You have to crawl before you can walk. <sighs> yeah, it's it's something that's uh, ingrained in all of us. I think. Uh, I mean, I can say as a uh, tall white guy who grew up in whites uh, <laughs> rural New Jersey. Um, <laughs> You know, I belonged other than with the jocks or whatever. I was more the nerd, but I always felt like I belonged. But it's not something you think about unless you don't. You know, you you take for granted. And, you know, having 
become a kid, I mean, having become an adult and having kids and seeing what they experience, especially in the preteen to teen period, mm -hmm. kind of puts it in a, yeah. under a microscope for you. You can see how much you, you know, it kind of reminds you of your own childhood and, mm -hmm. and even, you know, every day now as an adult, how every little thing we do can help or not make someone else feel like they're part of your mm -hmm. whatever micro community mm -hmm. and you know it's you know it's easy to take it for granted if you're in the group and it's it's you know i, I was uh, I, I don't want to get too far off the topic but i kept preaching to my church i said we say we're an inclusive but i said i've only been here five years and I'm, when i come to after service, I come to the coffee hour. Everybody breaks into yeah, little, little yeah. groups, and I feel like the mm -hmm. like the free radical kind of bumping between. The, I, I don't know where to connect because yeah. you've all been together for so long. You go right into your conversation. I'm like, we need to get turn away from what's easy, yeah, right. and try yeah. to say, you know, I don't know that person. I'm going to go introduce myself, mm -hmm. and 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 that's how you you build bridges and and invite people in, and that's something I kept trying to beat into our church yeah. and um, we're we're welcoming I'm like mm, no yeah and I should go welcome you know? you know just like Troy said it's the B yeah that yeah. we can focus yeah. on the B yeah yeah, yeah. yeah you know? and it's that might B. help some steps get along yeah. yeah and it's that psychological safety so creating that warm place and that welcoming environment for people to feel safe so they can feel brave in that space to be able to walk over to another group you know and that and it's it's all scary it's scary for all of us um mm -hmm. you know one thing that you know is important is that like what i do when i feel uncomfortable is i smile right and that usually <laughs> welcomes people you know and and then i feel more comfortable in that environment because they feel they feel like, oh yeah, he's kind of, you know, pleasant to to talk to or whatever. And even though I'm nervous inside because I'm meeting someone new, it still opens the dialogue for conversation. That's a good tool. I'll have to think about. It. Yeah, <laughs> it's just my nervous reaction. I don't know, but <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but one of the things too that I wanted uh, wanted to briefly talk about is um, uh, the e. The equity part of this is, um, you know, I was having a conversation with Carolyn the other day and we were kind of um, talking about uh, equity and because I I hear it said in a lot of forms and in, in, in the HR world, we talk about pay equity, um, you know, is it fair, you know, a lot of these things and I hear these terms thrown out a lot and I stopped and I said, all right, are we talking about equal or equity? And, right. and she, right. said, she said, well, what do you mean? And I said, let me give you an example. I said, equal is we're all going to go out for a walk and everybody gets a pair of shoes. Equity is everybody gets a pair of shoes that fit. That means we're meeting you where you are. Um, and she was like, oh, that's a good way of putting it. And I was like, yeah, so whenever we have these conversations, I need you to be a little bit more clear about, you know, are we talking about, well, everybody has to work the same hours or, you know, everybody needs to be set on the same pay scale or, you know, those kinds of things. But if we're talking mm -hmm. about equity, we have to talk about, we're going to go meet that person where they're at to get them up to where we need them to be, where mm -hmm. they deserve to be, whatever the mm -hmm. situation is. So I like to talk about that because as this compensation study moves forward, um, we're going to be talking heavily about um, pay equity. <laughs> and it's going to be because um, not everybody is either equal um, mm -hmm. or even equitable. And so that's my goal is trying to get it to be equitable pay across the board. And when I first started here, I actually did a pay equity study for the board um, it broke it down by by gender because that was what I was asked to do. Um, and that was a while ago when I first started. But it's one of the things that I, I'm I'm passionate about because it breaks down the uh, feeling of inequity, really. And I think once you we can get past that, it takes down some of the 
the um, lack of trust builds a little bit more psychological safety, which allows people to show up more as their authentic self. Mm -hmm. so I just wanted to talk about that a little bit because I may come back to you and say, it might, it might be an equitable here. <laughs> I, I think that's great. I mean, I work for an institution of higher education and I, I like to think we're a fairly open-minded, if not progressive, and yet my workplace, the higher paying jobs are predominantly men. The lower paying jobs are predominantly women. It's like, mm -hmm. how do we, you know, that, that, that's not what I'm paid to do, but it, it, I see it every day. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and looking at, um, you know, it, it, it's uh, when you sit in my chair and you look at people's pay on a daily basis and, and you see the inequity, uh, be a gen, it could be anything. It could be, you know, skill, experience, tenure, gender. Um, there's so many things that go into it. Um, it's it's a little bit eye opening when when you present that back to the board and say, well, you know, if you make this decision, it's going to make an inequity because, you know, it's going to shift things around. Um, mm -hmm. So just some of the things that, you know. I sit and, and ponder over on a daily basis. Uh, can, I, can I just say something? Um, I, I'm please. sorry, I came in late. Uh, your name, your first name is Troy, is that right? That's correct. Yeah, nice yeah to meet um, you, Megan. I'm Megan. Um, I, I really like that idea of sort of being a resource for you, right? And even if we don't have all the answers per se, I know for myself just when I'm stuck with something, being able to talk with a group of people and um, getting feedback, talking about different ideas. So I really um, would hope that you'd feel comfortable just touching base with us as needed um, and that we could all put our heads together and think about these issues. They're critically important. And I think um, this issue of compensation is really important, right? I, I'm mm -hmm. so, always terrible at remembering the figures, but it's like, the, the white woman makes X amount per dollar to the white man. And then the African-American woman makes X amount. And like, I, just on that fundamental level of, of uh, you know, compensating people for their work, I think is so critical. So I'm really appreciative that you're really attending to that. Um, I think that's huge. So and, I, and I appreciate that, Megan. I really do, because as you guys are, are probably aware there's policies that um, will accompany the compensation study. Right now, my research is, and some of the drafts that I have are four um, separate policies that will accompany that. Um, and some of the things that, you know, um, I look at are when we were doing this is what is the naming um, convention of different jobs? Mm -hmm. um, so, one of the recommendations that's going to go forward to the board will be to change the term foreman in the DPW department. Um, that was one of the big things that I pointed out. I was like, well, this, this isn't inclusive, you know, like what, what are we trying to achieve here? Um, so it, it was my recommendation to change that to supervisor and we'll see if the board accepts that. Uh, but either way um, I will be, I, I, I was great. I was happy to connect with you guys because uh, as I come forward, you know, a second set of eyes for um, as I'm drafting policies and stuff uh, would also, also be a, a, a wonderful yeah. breath of fresh air. <laughs> sure. Yeah. sure. Yeah. And just to know that you're not the only person who feels this way. <laughs> For me, joining this committee was that step. It's like knowing, okay, good, there are other people in Hadley who care about this. <laughs> Phew. <laughs> well, I would say you should fire me if I didn't feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the wrong profession. <laughs> I have a question, Troy. Do you I'm mind sorry. if I ever, uh, if I can speak with you on a one on one basis at any time? Absolutely. I welcome, welcome the opportunity. I, you know, the more knowledge and the more experience I can get and, you know, and, and learn from you guys is only going to make me better in my role and better for the town and better for the community. 
I can get your email from Mark, I guess, and mm -hmm. then we can come up with a date and time when it's, a, you know, it's, it's probably, and it's it's something that we both can do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those Wonderful. That would be great. Yeah, yeah. that would be terrific. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal. Oh, sure. Of course. I, I appreciate Troy yeah. even being open yeah. to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a wonderful sunshine. <laughs> Well, I appreciate that. It's it's a breath of fresh air for me to know that I have you guys here and that you're open to dialogue and communication and, and really working together and collaborating to kind of, you know, make this, take this next step because I think it's much needed in the community. Thank you. Mm. I appreciate that. Mm. Any other questions? This is great. This We're is gonna, wonderful. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I'm glad he has it written all down because yeah. like the yeah. list of opportunities and challenges like well oh that's right he's got it written down there are challenges yeah i will when i when i disconnect i'll i'll email to mark real quick and then you guys will do it. thank you That'd so much excellent yeah thank don't be intimidated by us yeah. we, we it took yeah. us a long time to come up with those questions <laughs> It doesn't, it doesn't roll off of our you know. I'm not going to lie. I was like, man, do I need to reach out to my professor and be like, I'm back in grad school again. Yeah. And I feel like I'm, I'm, you know, creating the wheel because this, this is not something I've done. And, you know, we did have a, a, a diversity book club at our, our office a couple of years ago. And we used to read books every, you know, mm -hmm. every few months but otherwise I haven't had any formal so yeah uh, you're actually impressing me like we could learn from you so yeah of course I think we can all learn right. from, from, each from each other, other. Yes. yes awesome well I appreciate your time thank you so much pleasure to meet all of you I look yeah. forward to connecting with each of you um so don't hesitate to reach out and uh I will be in touch. I'll shoot you that email, Mark. Again, I appreciate you. Thank you, Troy. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, Troy. Thank you so Bye -bye. much. Bye. Bye-bye. And we get to pop Megan up there. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Megan. It's your turn. <laughs> Yay. Hello. Good to see everybody. I'm glad, I'm glad you could make it. Yeah. Yeah, me yeah. too. Running running late, running the kids around, had to get some food. Oh, had to get okay. some food in the kiddo before I could join. So I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Um, Shall we go back to sure. the agenda? Yeah, the review of minutes, I believe, yeah. is the usual. The only thing you missed was the, I think, was the uh, opening reflection, which was uh, to send thoughts and prayers to the people of Kansas City that uh, had to be the latest victims of unnecessary violence. So. Yeah. The minutes. Uh, the only typo I caught in the minutes was in 5C, down near the bottom of that paragraph, for the upcoming redevelopment phrase should say phase. Okay. But otherwise... Oh, you got an extra phase. line on there? Yeah, I see that. I think otherwise I didn't see anything else. You said 5C? Oh, yeah, I see it. Sorry, yeah, I found it. Oh, you got yeah. it. That was on number four. Yeah. 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 I did. Well, luckily I circled that or I yeah. had forgotten. Mm -hmm. I would entertain a motion to approve them. Second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'll make you I was I was looking for a motion. So okay. your your second was a motion and your third was a second. That's right. right. There we go. <laughs> All in favor? Okay. Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstaining? No. It was, um, Unanimous. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Thank so, you, Pat, for getting them out yes. so quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Pat is here in spirit. Yeah. Right. Uh, minutes, uh, we, then we had the conversation with Troy, and then we had discussion about support for families at night's end. Um, and that is in my court. I uh, reached out to 
Carolyn, I have to actually go back through my memory on this because I've been immersed in work for three weeks. I reached out to Carolyn Brennan, the uh, town administrator, because we heard that she was the one that was uh, involved with it. And she directed me to, um, she said that Dr. Uh, Annie McKenzie, uh, the superintendent of schools, actually uh, knew more. Mm -hmm. And she um, called me and she sent an email with uh, like all the update information she had shared with the group. Mm -hmm. And if I have not shared that with you, that's on me. I will send that out. Uh, and it was very interesting. Um, uh, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head now, but how many, uh, how many of the uh, immigrants were uh, children and were in the school, and how they were, um, and w what things they could use, what what they need. She did say that the um, they're at, at the nights in. There's one room there that is used as. Um, National Guard. Yeah, I think, I think it's the it's National Guard. in minutes. Oh, is it? Under okay. 5B okay. is all of what you're talking about. Okay. Right. It's all Good. right there. Yeah. So, yeah, so 16 so individuals under 21. Yeah. Um, so, kind of half and half. And she said most of them were in the elementary school, too. Okay. In here, but Are yeah, these right. children with families? I mean, yeah. uh, parents? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It just, just yeah. But it's families, right? And right. So, families, and, but out of those eleven families, sixteen are under twenty-one. Sixteen yeah. children. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. <clears throat> so no news since last month. That's the yeah. last. Yeah. Yeah, because right. I remember okay. she said that it was actually really actually difficult. It's a complication. To donate, you can't donate. just drive that, up to they, the nightstand. They don't and have say, a place to put it, and yeah. so yeah. they've been. Yeah. The things that they do get, they've been either taking to their Worcester. Yes. Warehouse and then bringing as they need it, mm -hmm. or some things they have just. Uh, awesome. given to other charities yeah. locally. Yeah. So let me ask this, what if these children needed tablets or some sort of um, um, electronic to actually, electronic device to be able to function yeah. properly and learn effectively in school? Are we able to go to the school and have the school handed out to the children? I mean, because as you said, it's just mm. going to go somewhere else and then they deliver it when it's necessary. Right. So all children need an electronic device. I do not know if the school has provided that to them temporarily. Yeah, I don't know. That's something yeah. I guess I can find out from the superintendent. We could ask her. Yeah, yeah. we would ask her. I know that when I was um, involved with the circle of care that was helping the Afghan family, uh, one of our members found that there's an organization, a volunteer organization in Northampton that is, has some techie people on it and they accept, when, when people upgrade their tablet or their laptops, they accept them and then they refresh them and clear them and whatever and then they donate them to people in need. Mm -hmm. I forgot what the, you know, so something like that might be very helpful. Right. And also, um, when I did the Juneteenth last year, you never know of an organization that just may want to donate to participate. Mm. So it, the first step, I guess, would be to speak with the, the principal yeah. or yeah. the superintendent to see if they have devices and if not, to see how it's possible for us to provide it to them yeah. instead of in bulk where it can go somewhere else and it can go directly to these children. It can mm. be left in the school you know, and, and just use for school purposes instead of online at the hotel. Oh, I like that. We could we could find out if there's a need, you know, how many, you know, do you need five, do you exactly. need 12? And then we could go around to the community and exactly. say, look, do have you have, you know, functional. yeah, do you have these that you want, would would you like donate? to participate? Uh, 
yeah. big big why would you right. like to sponsor oh, one yeah, right. you know uh, and that's what UMass, would you right. like to, you know yeah that's could, what i did last year um, with the i had sponsors to help mm -hmm. with the juneteenth yeah. so if we can find sponsors that would like to help with these children mm -hmm. to effectively learn i mean yeah. they're in the, they're in a whole brand new space yeah, yeah. and yeah. they're very uncomfortable and mm -hmm. and not having something to make you feel welcomed or inclusive can definitely or put a bearing with what the other students right, you're not, you don't exactly. have the shoes to match their shoes exactly you know, right? or the size you yeah. might have the yeah. shoes but do they fit yeah. so <laughs> if you if you don't have the same right. items you yourself feel as if you're not going to excel because you you do not have the learning yeah. um, yeah. um, items so need. that would be good to ask yeah. you know, UMass ask is a Annie good one. to Annie you know, what do what's the minimum that most kids you know yeah. need do they need like a, this kind of tablet or that kind of tablet and so you know and how much memory and we could find something and find what, what the best price is and put a dollar value to it and say we need you know yeah. 10 of these at this price and then go around to potential sponsors and say you know yeah. do you so have one to donate to or out. would you like to contribute to it you know, find out what they need first yeah I went to an African-American um, Kwanzaa in Amherst mm -hmm. and I facilitated and acquired a few contacts mm -hmm. so I'm wondering if I can reach out to them to see if they would like to assist mm -hmm. in donating items and, and I'm focusing on computers I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not accepting yeah. notebooks uh, no, yeah. computers is what is is what is going to be necessary and right. needed. So, right. you know, and then I'm quite sure that the medicine has Wi-Fi. Probably right. Yeah. right. So I think that's something that I can um, yeah. reach out and see if they'll they'll yeah. be okay with that. You mass, you know, Africa House. You never know yeah. who um, yeah, yeah. is thinking but doesn't yeah. know how to reach out. She yeah. might say that they need. Um, app xyz that exactly. helps that helps them learn english from was it creole was yeah, the creole. Pre yeah, predominant language yeah. so yeah, 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 yeah stuff like that. mark you had also last meeting that that dr mckenzie had given a list of just sort of basic personal care items right. that the families yeah. had needed diapers soap shampoo mm -hmm. Do we have any information as to whether or not they were able um, to get those personal care items? Because that's something that really stuck with me, just feeling yeah. like, gosh, the, the, the terror of leaving your country, having to be forced out of your country, violence, coming here, it's the middle of winter, and then also not having just basic items to care for oh. oneself and yeah. one's body. Um, so being newer to Hadley, I don't, I feel like I don't know as many networks of church communities or different organizations or different, you know, um, networks to sort of tap, but I just feel like um, also wanting to, to see if, if folks basic needs are, are being met. Right. And a computer sounds amazing. And to make sure like, that, you know, folks have diapers for their babies and just every day and the kind of shampoo little. that they like right i mean right. i know well, i mean that, that could be, doesn't yeah, irritate them. Yeah, that could be something yeah. that any one of us can look into you yeah. know as yeah. long as as the right. necessities but the yeah. learning portion is yeah. just just as important as the necessities sure. yeah what if we had uh, what if we had a point of contact that would reach out to her, uh, dr mckenzie and say do you want to be our point of contact or do you have someone on your staff that we could reach out to say every two weeks and say what do you need or we have this how can we get it to yes instead of sending it at a large scale it can be yeah. a smaller scale yeah. so we can be sure that they do receive it yeah. right and because i remember one time they want i wanted it. to go to the women's shelter mm -hmm. and donate uh toys and clothes mm -hmm. And it was shocking. I was told, no, we don't, we do not want your toys and your clothing and your pampers. Why don't you just give us gift cards and we'll hand them out? Mm. And, and I didn't like that. Mm. I, I didn't like that because mm. you know what? Anyone can give anyone a gift card. It's the fact that you yes. thought about 
the need yeah. and you personally yeah. provided it. Yeah. Right. So that's that that was not something nice. I did not like that. No. So as Megan is saying, it you know, it is just to be sure that that's being met as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another so idea. Mind, yeah. Oh, sorry, Mark. No. Go ahead. Well, I, I guess I wondered, I mean, I, I would be happy to sort of donate as an individual person or pick up some items, but I also just think like, um, right, our, our work collectively or tapping into networks that people might already be involved in could be more impactful in terms of um, being able to give sort of more. So I, I guess I just wondered about that because I was thinking about reaching out to Dr. McKenzie, but then I was like, how effective am I going to be just as a single sort of community member? Um, mm -hmm. So I just would welcome any thoughts that anybody has on that. Well, that's what I was wondering, and you can tell me if this is, you know, this is something that those of, been, uh, those of us who have been here all along know that we have a tendency to bite off more than we can chew, and then we burn out and, <laughs> yeah. and we back mm -hmm. off. I mean, so if this is too much, that's fine. But what if we had a subcommittee that would uh, offer themselves as uh, as like an emergency contact to the school system. Say, if you hear that they need this within 24 hours, reach out to us because they probably don't have a budget to get them, no, you know, feminine hygiene or or uh, you know diapers or mm -hmm. whatever. You know, so if they need so, something, yeah, run right, yeah. you know, something. Let us know, and then we can rally our group or you know yeah right, right and try to get that specific thing that is just what they want right yeah the emergency need because i'm sure what the <laughs> national guard person is worried about is like oh people are going to treat this like the donation box outside yeah. salvation army and just bring us whatever and all the beans they don't eat right, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's oh. not what they want they want the specific things that those right. families actually right. need and want to use yes. right. and that's what we yes. want to find out is right. what do they specifically need and, and I want. Was, as you were talking i was saying to myself maybe i'll just take a walk over there one day and just meet them yeah mm -hmm. meet the parents sit down mm -hmm. talk with them yeah and and get a sense of uh, emotionally how they yeah. feel yeah. and because you know Haitian people are are people that are quiet anyway mm -hmm. so being in another town where you, you're not yeah, seeing anybody. yourself yeah. it can really make you quiet so if they see someone that they may be able to relate to they may open up a little bit more on the things that they are experiencing or going through or needing yeah. And, and it will make them a lot more comfortable knowing that they may have an advocate. Yeah, yeah that, would, that yeah. would be wonderful. That would be huge. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, back to Anne and Mackenzie. It, maybe we want to circle back because she did say mm -hmm. coordinate with the National Guard. This is I totally but, agree with what you just said. By the way, yeah. but but like you know, this these are minutes from. January. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it it would seem that there there might be groups who are helping and we don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. right. And and if it would seem that she or they would know. And so is there a way that we can amplify the message of the you you know it would be like if if we heard that the the Girl Scouts were doing something and so then we helped to get the word out. Mm -hmm. But see know. the key word that you just said were groups yeah. instead of individual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think an in individual would have a better understanding with them than a group. Mm -hmm. So this individual would be able to speak with them, find out the necessity and the needs, and then reach out to the group. Right. That, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because right. there's yeah. somebody here. Right. Annie is saying there's some, and there's somebody living on the premises, some, some yeah. member of the National Guard Living on the premises. Well, I, don't, I don't know if he's living there or, yeah. or if he's so, there for there, 12 there, hours there, or something. There like have that. to be some yeah. needs that are getting with a member of the National yeah. Guard. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it just, when it, when Annie met with us, it, it, it sounded, it just felt kind of murky the way she said, well, you can't just drop things. You can't yeah. just walk in. Yeah. You can't, you know, and this language, you know, it, okay, so did I get my question answered? Well, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, it seems more of a, a, a self. 
To your point, I vaguely remember her saying something about there was at least one or there were a couple charitable groups that wanted to help, but there was some disconnect that they yeah. couldn't, something with the or, state that yeah. it wasn't working yet. Yeah. Like, and I, I, I can't remember what that was. So, so us, a bunch of volunteers who aren't a 503C yeah. or whatever it is, maybe, Getting paid. maybe we can make something happen exactly. instantly and and we're here in hadley boots on the ground right. so. exactly yeah. and that's that's what i was saying yeah. you know yeah. i mean i'm kind of thinking, thinking if somebody knows that they like a specific shampoo that they have at big y i'd be happy to add it to my cart the next time <laughs> or, or, the or that they all like and or if, if we, we can figure out what they all like or what they all are able to use maybe we can get it at bj's yeah, right, and get a right. large a one instead of a lab. single one. Yeah. So, so the goal yeah. is to buy it in bulk Aggregate and not and individual. Right. You know, yeah. this way everyone has that one thing that they use. And yeah. if someone runs out, it's bringing them closer as a community and family. Hey, can I borrow a cup yeah. because my right. daughter used too much? Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Yeah. So this is. It's it's more of bringing it, mm -hmm. bringing everyone together and understanding that Hadley is here. Hadley is definitely some place that you can reach out to and do not feel ostracized at oh, all. Yeah. You, you are welcome. We have you here, yeah. and we want you to understand that whatever it takes, we're going to make sure that you are going to mm -hmm. to accept. You, you make me think of the idea of planting a seed into the National Guard that mm -hmm. our committee would want to know any time this kind of situation happens again. Mm -hmm. Like that our group would like to know to be able to be supportive. Yes. And it just yes. made me think of that. Exactly. This, this kind of thing is, isn't going to end. No. Right. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. This is just the beginning. Right, exactly. Yeah, we need to you get know. better at this. <laughs> yes, and, and just hearing a National Guard living on the premises. Yeah. I was like, wow, where are they going to go? That can, yeah, well, that, that, could, that couldn't have been a good away. first impression on them <laughs> no. because their experience with military in Haiti, yeah. in, this is, in this, Haiti was probably yeah. not good. No, it, yeah. yeah, and that's why it's good but that we don't know. Discussing. We just don't have any idea what yeah. the presentation is. Right. I mean, that think, person is probably right. there to guard them as much as... Sure. Hadley. As, yeah, probably more <laughs> to guard them <laughs> yeah. from just if anybody going by well, and the, taking the, advantage. We, we do not know these We just people. don't know. Yeah. We don't know their background. There may not even be a guard as in... Oh no! 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 no, no. Mark! No. no! No! I mean, I, I worked for the. Oh my uh, goodness! I, I worked for for the Air Force, and they did a lot of um, uh, famine relief and yeah. stuff like that. You know, yeah. and so it was. Yeah. Yes, it, it was so. the Army res or it was the Air Force Reserve, but yeah. there was no force in it. Yeah. yeah. No, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I just think that just the presence yeah. is enough. Yeah. You know, I also, I also know that when we had, uh, when we were supporting the Afghan family, who again new, just dropped out of space yeah. into our country. One of the things that was big, um, a big help to them was getting them rides on short notice when they had a mm -hmm. medical appointment, or getting them to the. Uh, Pharmacy when they needed something, mm -hmm. um, uh, teaching them how to use the bus system. You know, oh, that's th great. Things yeah. like that. Right? That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yes, yeah. that that's great. This way, they you know, I mean, I, I don't think they'll do it now, you know, mm -hmm. because they would have to definitely be accompanied. Mm -hmm. You just they they wouldn't know their way around or anything. Yeah. But like you said, a ride. Yeah. So if they all can think of a day so yeah or if we had a point of contact and the school reached out yeah. to let's say no, it's, right. let's say it's me and, and, and it <laughs> says um is there anyone do you think that could give a mother and her son a ride to a doctor in northampton uh tomorrow at 11 30 i could circulate mm -hmm. that yeah. around the group mm -hmm. and yeah. Again, you're leveraging with more people mm -hmm. 
yeah. that there might be someone that that fits into their schedule. Right. You know? I think it should be at least 24 hours. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. we need to yeah. find out more about what the needs are and how we can help meet them. Yeah. Yeah. The contact yeah. people. That's, that's yeah, we need to develop need them. Because right like, now we're just kind of spinning it? all these ideas yeah. and we have no place to plug right. them in. Right. How would like, we that's why I was thinking of, the ideas. of meeting them and, and yeah. just seeing the comfort yeah. level yeah. in general. Yeah. In general, the comfort level. Why not? Hoping the National Guard does not say, hey. Yeah. Right. Stop what you're doing and right. don't go any further. You know. Their biggest so, need might might be translation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Right. So it exactly. sounds like you're willing to to walk on over there. Yes. Did someone else want to circle back with Annie? Yeah. To, well, I'm the to, one that she wrote to, so I can okay. just reach out. Uh, yeah. Is there any updates we want to? Right. Yeah, or yeah. Yeah. Be a part of, like you said, <clears throat> for what is happening yeah. there. How would we actually give them soap? <laughs> right. That's the part that I didn't get here. Right. Was this was okay? Like or, open right. it says what, what they need, need, but yeah. how can we right. get it right? Tonight? Just yeah, that it just without <clears throat> going through the outside process. <laughs> you know, can right we, without it going to Worcester. First. Exactly. It doesn't need to leave town. No, somebody can't. is filling some needs. I would think right. they are eating. Right. I imagine. Right. Food. Right yeah, they're, they probably have EBT <laughs> and th things like that, which yeah. are helping them. <clears throat> and and um, also, we can, well, I mean, I looked this up. It sounds disgusting, but I would eat it. Um, it's, it's food for the Marines, the service, and you buy it, and it's protein and calories and everything and it gives you the daily need mm -hmm. so i'm wondering how are they able to cook and what are they eating is it nutritional you see what i mean yeah, so this is what we that. don't know no. yeah our, our afghan no, no. family got an, an allowance and they were able to use like an ebt or whatever it was called yes. and they quickly learn what stores had the foods they wanted and it was just getting there you know yeah, and, oh, yeah. yeah. exactly yeah. getting there sure that's all of that out. so i mean yeah. like we do have some international food stores along oh, yes. route nine so yeah. there are options yeah yeah, yeah. there's so a hand up too <clears throat> so mark you're you're comfortable reaching back out to dr mckenzie both about sort of if these families sort of daily needs and also the the really important question about any of the kiddos learning needs um mm -hmm. in terms of computers in terms of any other um resources that they might need i know like hopkins has chromebooks for the students hopkins academy but um i don't know that i don't know if the elementary school has those kinds of resources so i i think that's a really important point um <coughs> willing to reach out that would be great and I wonder rather than waiting to the next meeting if you could sort of if you feel comfortable just forwarding along that reply from Dr. McKenzie so we can all just sort of get, right. get things moving if if these families sure. are in immediate need sure yeah. Yeah. thank you so much cool. yeah. are you Megan are you yeah. able to do anything as far as uh, reaching out to anyone or assisting mm -hmm. in finding out what we can do to move forward yeah yeah i mean um i am connected to i'm so i'm a newer hadley resident but i'm also connected to other community groups in surrounding towns so um and those groups also you know um practice sort of like mutual aid ideas of someone needed a ride or someone needed connection to resources so um yeah i would be happy to reach out and then once we have maybe a little more information about what the needs are to to put our heads together and i'd also be happy to meet separately if we want to just spend a little more time thinking about you know um how we can support these families in this transition and anything I find out once I yeah. Google, I will definitely create um, a Word document or whatever and just email Great. it to everyone. So you're Great. all we are all on the same page about Great. what Great. what's happening. Good. Thank you. I okay. think this is a great topic that we're all can get easily fired up about. Um, we're already at an hour and a quarter, <laughs> so I'm just gonna keep us moving then if that's yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I don't want to stop anyone. If they want to add, if you have a thought you want to add in, as, as we go, let me know if I can help without help out with any re outreach to the community. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, Alan. We have, the, we have the power. Yes. The internet. <laughs> so, yes. would you be? Let's say if if they would be willing, not now, but to sit down and and just say a little bit about their background and how they, how you if know. they're comfortable, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Um, this I, won't happen right away. Well, no, 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 it won't happen right away. Um, if 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 that's something they're up to, you're up to, and there's a way we can get some translation in there right. too. Also, I think exactly. that would be great. Exactly. Yeah. Some type of communication, and you never know. Someone here in Hadby may be a translator. And yeah, yeah. Just That's getting it out there. You know? I, I could see things like if they needed four Chromebooks, and I, I don't know. Let's say they're, you know, thousand dollars a piece. We we could create a GoFundMe uh, oh. with a with a goal to hit four thousand to buy these, and then oh, everyone yeah. feels like they're buying a piece of. Helping of a clear, you know, these four kids will be able to learn because of my contribution. Oh, good idea. You know, Go there's all kinds of things we could. Yeah. We are brainstorming that time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, next new business we had discussion of interactive opportunities for people to get to know each other. That was uh, what with, along the lines well, of, the, of that game, right? Yeah. Well, when I I brought this up, I just just like you said, Sarah, when you were introducing yourself that we all joined this committee because we have this very strong interest in the inclusion and we're we're all now you know work together and and we I like that we have this in common yeah. Yeah. and um, I'm personally trying to uh, reach out and build more 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 friendships go get to, want to get together for lunch do you want to get hang, I, I am now I've decided it's not going to happen unless I reach out but um, my mentioning of this game was related I, I wasn't specifically saying what about we do this together although I'm open to that mm -hmm. but I'm starting to think that idea about the library strategic plan like this kind of thing at the library would would might fit but um I did bring the game with me, um, but frankly, I would enjoy it if we all got together for a potluck and got to know each other. Yeah. That's what I, mean. you know, I was going to recommend that because I mean, to be to be honest, sitting down and having that one-on-one -on -one contact in a comfortable place, you learn more than something that was created for just anyone. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just I just think that it would be nice if we meet up and mm -hmm. have coffee and just discuss yeah. whatever it is, you know. Yeah. That would bring us a lot closer yeah. and then you get to understand other people's background and their struggle yeah. and, and wherever they've come from, wherever they are now, where they're going. Yeah. yeah. I, I like that. Yeah. My uh my So I'm up for it. My <laughs> circle of care that you know, we all came from different places. We after like I don't know six months we had a gathering at one of the couple's houses and it was nice you know we had no agenda we just sat down and got to talk to each other yeah. people are you know talking about cross stitch or whatever and they're all you know or what whatever. what movies they saw or what their kids are you know it, it was great to just yeah, yeah let's do it. just be people together I would I would I do that to <laughs> organize it not while I'm being clerk no, no. <laughs> I think I think we could just email each other and say hey are you free this weekend are you free this next weekend and this way whoever's free can meet up yeah. and keep it low key it, yeah take it from there yeah. we have a lot on our agenda we're coming up on an hour and a half so we really need uh, to do the annual report annual report yeah okay. do you all get that as so a, this copy here we only have two copies oh yeah we have crystal two. i only yeah. succeeded in oh, okay. printing two copies because yeah, i you know what okay. with everything else did but i did did you email the pdf I, I you to everybody five minutes today, before i left the house so it's in your inbox as a pdf okay you should be able to open it and take a look at it Five minutes, so we could let you know. So I will be right at the top. I only saw saw these typos. Hadley through food. Okay. It's supposed to be through. Okay. And here, I think this is supposed to be that. Apologies for getting okay. into this so, so you late. Can take that. Yeah. 
straight. There you go. That's what you're looking for. Yep. <laughs> Good. So it goes through our program offerings. Black History Month program, LGBTQ Pride Mostly Month program, Pat. Indigenous Peoples Day program, Hadley World's Fair, gets into town policy recommendation. <clears throat> you know, on the town policy recommendation, it just makes me think when when we started, we floundered. We we didn't know what to do, where to go, where to, we didn't even know if we could even talk yeah, you know, outside of and you know and then to think that the one time we got fired up by something that was on social media that we found mm -hmm. or most people found offensive. Yeah. We wrote a letter, I brought it to the to the town administrator, and the next week they adopted a code of you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we were yeah. like, wow, <laughs> yeah. it was like pinch me. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> yeah. It can be done. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, like yeah. you, we, I do. You just don't know what to expect. We didn't know what to expect from Troy. I didn't know how receptive town would be but you know sometimes yeah. the ears want to hear what say you it. say yeah 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 it's just a good kind of if you see something say something yeah <laughs> priorities and plans conclusions that's it I looks, think it looks it great. It looks good to me. Yeah. And they probably need it any time. Yeah, they, they need it pretty soon. Yeah. Looks great to me. Thank you. What, what is the next step? Do you tell think, Pat or do you send it? But I. Yeah, I think Pat has the editable. I'm not sure if I have the editable version of it or okay. Pat does, but um, we'll make those corrections. And then submit it if the town, if the committee has approved it. So last year you you co-sponsored co the Hadley's World Fair. Mm -hmm. Really, I didn't know that, and I was part of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah with Hadley at, Art. Wasn't that at the yeah. library, or was that the one that was uh, the previous year? Like the previous year, it was at the library. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, previous year. So, but you guys did last year. Yeah. Yeah, I well, know about that. I think we brought brownies the year before, and I don't remember what we brought <laughs> the second year. Some of us came. Yeah. I, yeah. My family cooked. Yeah, yeah I, I remember. remember. I she remember loved, right yeah, well. we yeah. cooked a whole bunch of food. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it was, it was great, and I, I wanted to do it again, but, you know, something in, in just a little yeah. more manageable, yeah. more prepared. Yeah. Because it, it seemed as if it at the last minute things changed. Yeah, you know, yeah, and things you were expecting didn't come through for you. Well, no, we were told we could use the senior center's kitchen, and, and then we it, couldn't, no. so everything no. was cooked at my house. Mm. And we were we were told we were going to have things outside, and then there wasn't anything outside. Mm. Everyone was inside. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it really, I, I think it has to 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 be planned out. You know. Yeah. Well, to, maybe to, we'll to, go to, back to the library next year because that does. I mean, this year. Different. Yeah, this, that's right. It's already this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, maybe we can go back to the library, which has a really inviting outdoor space in front and behind the library. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Well, we can just we'll see. Oh no. It's time to. <laughs> it's time to stop messing with me. So we can still <laughs> age. Do, do we want to approve these? Oh, I um, would like to approve it. Uh, Is it appropriate for me to approve it? it since I helped okay. write it? <laughs> yeah, thank you. I just looked it up online. Thank you. Great. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I gave you it. Yeah. I just found two typos and I gave them to Sarah. Okay. Right. And so, so is that a perfect. is that a motion to approve? Well, yeah. if it's appropriate for me to move to approve yes. a document that I helped write, then I, <laughs> I move to, to approve it. it. I move uh, to approve. You. All right. So, so we'll go with Joanne then as yeah. as the motion if you don't and want to do yourself and then you get the second. <laughs> Okay. For the okay. minutes, we'll okay. just have it clear. And okay. all in favor? Sure. Aye. Aye, 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 aye. Opposed? None. 
abstain, then it's great. Unanimous. We're abstaining from this conversation. Yes. <laughs> All right. Time to go. And then we're on the item six, open agenda. I don't know if there's anything. I was just going. We, you all sent thing. about this. This Hadley. Yeah. Join us to take part in formulating the Hadley Library Strategic Plan. And I said, now yeah. that's right up my alley. Yeah. So I, I replied to Joanne. Oh. And she said, oh, I think your daughter was at Hopkins with my son. That's great. I'll put you down. So, I am on that committee. You're on on the yeah. Hadley Library Strategic Plan. Well, I'm part plan. of. I'm on the Hadley Library Board. Oh, you're board. on this. You're on you have the little. Oh, you're a trustee or whatever they. Not a trustee, oh, okay. but a board member. Oh, okay. The trustees are the ones that pay for everything. Oh, okay. But the board members are the ones that make the decisions, okay. and now I'm on the subcommittee as well. So for this, so for what you, you guys at. came up with this. Yes. All right. Oh, you have a double it. threat on that. Yes. <laughs> I'm interested in that group too. Diversity. So it's my old neighbor Lynn Latham. Is she on the Lynn, board? Lynn Lynn Latham. Lynn Bomas. Wait. No. Lynn anyway. Latham. No. I'll go to this. No. Great. Trustee. <laughs> Yeah, That's she might be a trustee. Do. I don't remember okay. anyone. So, the time we meet next, because Lynn Bowman, because I'm on the cultural yeah. district, okay. so she's on the cultural district. Yeah, I have friends. Thank you. But, yeah, cool. I'll be glad when this starts to roll. I'm just everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be a first for everything. <laughs> I am excited. Yeah. <laughs> My grandson is going to be told, your grandmother was the first. <laughs> He's gonna be like, I know. Okay, I heard it many times. <laughs> but it is a it is a privilege. I appreciate it. And thank you guys. Um, well, thank you. Closing reflection. Anyone have anything to to offer? I would like to say that I'm listening to a radio show on NPR. I think it's a podcast called Hidden Brain. I was, I, Do you listen to that too? I These have, last two are about how to bridge when, you, when people, people with differences. Yes. Oh God, the last one I loved. <clears throat> that was great. Talking I think about most, spending time yeah. with someone who was an advocate Trump and yeah. finding common ground and just yeah. breaking through your, yeah. your prejudices of each other. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, it was. What is, I would like to listen. Hidden it, brain. Well, if it you goes go, back about four or five years, if you, it's a weekly. Yeah. It, it, it's a weekly right, podcast. but but if you go online, they're all recorded. Yeah. And so these last Doesn't two were were specifically talking about bridging these yeah. divides, yeah. and yeah. and a key piece is you have to be open to being. Really listening to the other, yeah. yeah. But yeah. but uh, I like the whole series. Yeah. But but is it called Hidden, Hidden Brain? Hiddenbrain dot org, oh, and you can find that. that. And, and then it's the last there, two episodes. Well, those are yeah. yeah but you you I, you'll it, you'll like most of all of them. I I like all of them. I binged them when I drove to Illinois. It was like <laughs> thirty <laughs> hours. Years. Thirty hours of yeah. You did five it's, years. Well, I did a couple drives out. I did a drive to, you know, but yeah, I, I would just, Whoa. they're like 45 minutes and I would just roll one right into the next. I'm going and to like, is he, the, the host usually interviews someone. Them. Yeah, he'll interview someone who maybe wrote a book or did research and they always tell a little bit about, That's you know, amazing. how they ended up how they ended up becoming interested in this research they did. It's fascinating. Yeah, it's a lot of but psychology it, professors the, doing yeah, research. Yeah. But these two, about, their research, about bridging, because yeah. I'm interested in us all coming together as one human mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. yeah. In particular, though, when, we, when they bring up, and I'm so glad that Troy brought that up, about belonging, mm -hmm. the inclusion mm -hmm. part, mm -hmm. we just, when people see it completely differently and then we try to give them all the data and research and convince them <laughs> and we have just done the absolute wrong thing, thing to do to ever yes connect, connect. joanne yeah. let's go for a walk oh why yeah. a walk are you <laughs> cia <laughs> <laughs> wait that was real <laughs> he said you know he you know his neighbor he he had been avoiding for like oh, months this was like a podcast. On the podcast. Oh, okay. he said and this is not what I'm researching. I have to engage. And and, and so one, one time in the elevator, he said, do you want to go for a walk? Why do we have to go for a walk instead of just having coffee? But it was actually part of his belief that when if you're moving together, yeah, right. it, it helps flowing. the energy. Yeah. yeah. I, it I helps get say, you out of your just right. sitting there. Your comfort zone. Yeah. yeah. The last thing I would say, if you just listen even to the beginning of the last episode, the, the gentleman he was interviewing, talked about how 
as a young man who was a graduate student, he had this, this viewpoint that he just couldn't get how someone else, I'm not going to give the details because we'll be here all night, yeah. but that a te he couldn't understand how the other person couldn't get their viewpoint. But he had a professor in college who said, I want you to pick, pick an instance where you completely had, had a conflict with another person and write a paper about your point of view. Okay, now you're done. Now you're going to get in their shoes. Yeah, so and after you've going, written that, then the next that, week he said, now your assignment is... Exactly, right, the other person. person. Right. And, and, and that's when this gentleman got it, like, oh, this was my viewpoint, but he's got a valid viewpoint, too. Exactly. <laughs> and I just thought, how often do we... Yeah. That's, Not that's the think problem. about right. the right. other viewpoint. We and disagree on something problem. or someone yeah. or something. That's right. And so we throw everything else that might be good about them out. And yeah. we, we, you know, yeah. it's us and them thing. Anyway. And then also people, they, they come with their already generalized idea of yeah. who you are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and then they, they sit there and they have their definition and whatever you say is not even being heard. Right. Oh, yeah. So yeah. It, it's, it's terrible <laughs> where sometimes when I meet people, I automatically put myself in their shoes because, you know, I'm mm -hmm. a black I'm an African American woman, and you know, times are hard these days, things are being said. So, the first thing I do, I do not approach strangers as me, I approach them as who do they see me as, and how can I turn ah. that around uh -huh. so they're more comfortable enough to at least want to relax and say hi, wow. you know, and, and it's not hard to do. It's not hard to do. I like that. And yeah, trying to get out of your own space and see. Before see, you even put yourself in your space, put yourself in their space. See yourself through their eyes, right? And then you mm -hmm. can be able to relate to them on a different level. And then you can see the comfort and the smiles come out. <clears throat> and then when you say things that define you, they're not as, as uh, confused yeah. or as resistant to conversation. Uh, wow. they're, they're more apt to say okay i understand yeah, now yeah. it's 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 a really good thing to do you yeah, know yeah. Wow. that was really helpful because just after i listened to that episode i had an, in, an interaction with a customer where i completely failed <laughs> i completely I, I was like had like i'm gonna bridge this and i completely yeah. i i think this person saw me as you're just one of those customer service reps that doesn't care and you yeah. will not ever really hear my concerns. Exactly. That, see, that, thank you. I just, I, I she we hung are, up on me. We are all <laughs> far from perfect. Oh, you know, one so of the I'm episodes. A <coughs> yeah, we all are learning. One yeah, of the episodes, this, this researcher was finding that um, charity, you know, giving more to charity does certain qualities for your life, you know, and, 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 and how you feel about yourself, blah, blah, blah. And she said, uh, so I was at my annual visit with the accountant, and he's going to me, and he goes, um, I've read your book. <laughs> she wasn't given enough charity herself. She was like, I have to walk the walk here. Yeah, see? It, it, just, just having a conversation with someone opens up your eyes, and, and yeah. you know, just taking away the mask and, and just seeing just through your, your eyes and not through your definitions and not through in misconceptions and just see just see the color green just just yeah. don't see the person you know don't see the person and a lot of times people say things that they 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 don't understand are um offensive yeah. so you know but when you tell them they more than say, okay, well, you know, now I know. And yeah. that's an open mind. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. an open mind. And, and a person with an open mind can learn a lot. Yeah. Oh, so, I like that's a bumper sticker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm giving knowledge here. Hey. Yeah. Hey, well, we all can. Got myself right. two times. <laughs> I'll pat you. Well, that oh, thank you. you. Yep. Okay. That is that, uh, I think it's late. Confirming our next meeting will be 321. You have the whole year here. And, oh, good. Uh, we can. Yeah.
We can have right. a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. So that Alex can stop recording and go home. <laughs> I like that plan. Yeah. <laughs> I, although I love meeting you all. Yeah. I can, we yeah. know that. I love having you we're here. About, you do. I don't mind you here at all. No. We're about eight minutes overdrawn at the Alex Bay. Okay, band, motion so. to adjourn. Oh, I will move to adjourn. Here we go. Second. Okay. All in favor? I see, I, okay. Uh,